Yat et ne masan inishne. This is Navajo Grandma again. And today I'm going to tell you another story about the magnificent Chogo, our wonderful horse. And I did draw a few pictures to make sure that you have a glimpse of what I'm saying. The first picture will be of us, and this is my brothers and my sisters, not all of them, but we are riding on Chogo, all four of us, and sometimes one walked. When we were young, Daddy brought Chogo from the reservation to the rural home that we were in, in the city. I, I chuckle because the city, what we refer to the all-American city that we lived in, it was so small you could blink. People say you blink and you could you would miss it. But it was a wonderful place we lived. We were the first Navajo family there. My father was a police officer then. He did become a police officer in the white society as well as in the Navajo Nation. Since Daddy brought Chogo uh, back to our home, we had about I would say about maybe, I thought it was four acres, but maybe three acres. And he had some room to roam around in. And he was such an intelligent horse. And he also, I, I'm assuming he got to know that my mother was ill. And my dad was being a police officer. Anyway, so having Chogo around was like our babysitter. And he, I told you, he is just incredibly intelligent. A wonderful horse. And so human. He started to watch over us and he would always be there to, you know, he'd come in front of the cement block and we'd all get on him. He'd stand there and we'd all jump on him and we'd ride off and he would take us around and we kind of knew, I mean, where, where we would go, but sometimes he went on his own, but he was such a fun horse to have and he would stand and make sure we were there. And can you imagine having four little funny Navajo kids on him and we would ride and ride and then when we would tell him to stop and we knew we were going to stop at a certain place um, he would kind of kneel down and let us slip off it's kind of funny because it was kind of fun we kind of slip off the towards the top of his head and it was like a little slide and we'd go bing he would I'm going to show you a picture. Chew the grass. Here's Togo chewing grass while my one of my sisters sitting in the tree. And somebody has a little mud pit there digging around and we're playing ball. If we found a ball, I just put a ball there because it could have been a can. And I didn't want it to depict the can, but more than likely it was a can. And probably a, a, an old uh, rusted can we'd kick around. So he'd chew around the grass right around us. He didn't go far at all. Sometimes I would sit by myself and my sisters and brothers would be running around. And that thought of, mo of my mother would come back. And, and I would feel, I don't know where. Sometimes it'd just come on me. And, and I missed her so horrible. And I was the little, I was the youngest. And I remember um, Choco would come over and and start nudging me because I'd be by myself and he would, I know he'd see my tears and um, he would nudge me and then he would uh, come over and kind of get me up and you know if there was a can there he would nuzzle the can and throw it at me and then I would in turn kind of forget about my mom and I would kick the can back to him and pretty soon sometimes he would kick it with his with his front hoof and and it was so funny because he would bite it and then he would take it and run to the right and I'd run after him then he'd throw it in the air and I would run after it and it was just amazing what he did and it's always stayed with me because he's always done that and so I would forget about mom and it's amazing even to this day sometimes I think of my mother and I cry because I love her and she was always so sick and I needed her to be with me but I also understood she was sick. So with that said, uh, Chogo would get me out of my mood and then... Uh, 
we would be so busy, if you look at this picture again, we'd be so busy playing that the clouds would come up. You know, you would think that most people would say, oh gosh, it looks like the clouds are coming in. Why don't we just go in, you know? We didn't even think that. But it was Chogo, and sometimes I'd see him look up and he'd sniff around. And then guess what he would do? Sure enough, uh, all of a sudden you could feel the water sprinkling and starting to sprinkle. And what he would do is he would nudge us and he would put us underneath him. And he'd make sure that he would have us sit against the bush or whatever and something behind us. And he would go in front of us and then he would make sure that we were sitting underneath him. He would just nudge us under, underneath him. And if you can see, this is uh, him standing and the rain would be falling all around and puddling and we would just be dry. I mean, yeah, we got some water on us, but but he was just our caretaker. And I love that about him. And, and Togo has always been like a, a parent and a guardian caretaker. He could understand the emotions like with me. And then after the rain would finish and we'd, and he would be wet, um, he would kind of just walk us back. But uh, other times he would kind of get down on his knee and allow, allow us, because I was the smallest. I would always sit in the back. I was always at the end. And, um, and he would kind of, kind of lay down and we would get on top of his back and then we'd all line up and, and grab onto each other and then he would get up. And so see, this is what I'm saying, how magnificent and loving and kind Chogo was. And so those are memories that I wanted to share with you. And, and I also want to be an example of you um, understanding that you have animals, I'm pretty sure that you loved. And, you know, write the stories, keep them. You know, they're keepsakes. Your story is yours. And if you don't tell it, what's gonna happen? You know, uh, we always say we should have, could have, would have asked our grandparents. It's not true. We probably wouldn't have because to this day, you know, we always, everybody worries and say, well, I didn't ask my grandfather. Um, the last example uh, I will give is uh, my husband does research with, with me. And one day uh, we were doing genealogy research and this gentleman was very remorseful that he didn't write or made a record of his life or he didn't ask his grandparents. And so my husband said, well, you know what? Why don't you go and talk to your grandmother? And he didn't listen. And he said, get the last words, take, you know, tape recorder, do something, record what she has to tell you. You know, she's still alive. Well, problem is, um, after beckoning this guy over and over and he didn't do it, his grandmother died. And it's sad. So be careful. You know, value what's really valuable, which is your story and your life for your posterity. And as well, sometimes if you keep a record when you're feeling down and, and sad or you're not making progress in whatever you want or someone's being mean to you or something, go back to those things, your records that you wrote. Go back and revisit when you had a happy time and, and happy moments and when you were strong so that it gets you over those bumps because we don't know what, what we're going to go through. And that's what keeps your strength. The strength is our ancestors and their stories and things like this. You know, Chogo keeps me going. You know, even to this day, I, I, I have happy thoughts and I remember his love for me. My grandfather, my grandmother, my Biji, my Nali, and my mother, my father, my brothers, my sisters, things that I remember that I wrote down. And when I reread them, it gives me strength in this life. And 
I hope you remember these things. It's wisdom. It didn't come from me because I was taught this. And I'm glad I followed through. So that is my wisdom for you. And I hope you follow through and, and keep your story. Write it. Share it. Read it when you need it for strength. So I love you. Hagonia, and I'll see you in another video. I hope you enjoy this story about Chogo the Magnificent. Hagonia.